behind me. I'm just training for my next track meet, but it's time to trade my sneakers in for my curiosity cap so we can dive into some science today. Woo! I'm hoping today's lesson can actually help me train for my track meet. I'm trying to run faster and jump higher. There's just one problem. The other kids have much longer legs than I do. So, while I've been out here practicing, I started to wonder if the only way to get better at running faster and jumping higher would be if my legs could grow longer. Hmm. What do you think? Do you think that people with longer legs can run faster and jump higher than people with shorter legs? Hmm. Now, I know I can't make my legs any longer, but maybe there is another solution. And instead of just guessing, I thought we could dive into some science for the answer. And it turns out science actually can help me better train for my next meet. So let's get to it. Have you ever watched a professional sports game or cheered on your favorite athlete and wondered how they got to be so good? Wondered how they jump so high or run so fast? Me too. The truth is, sometimes people are naturally gifted in the athletics department. But the good news is that it doesn't mean there isn't hope for anyone to looking to improve. But the good news is that that doesn't mean there isn't hope for anyone looking to improve. In fact, it's a common myth that long legs equal fast runners and high jumpers. As it turns out, there is a lot more that goes into training than having long legs. In fact, there are many successful athletes, including those with Olympic medals and records when it comes to running and jumping, who don't have super long legs. That's great news for any aspiring athletes without mile high legs. So, if it's not about the length of your legs, then what is it about? The truth is, it's less about height and leg length and more about athletic abilities in terms of strength and flexibility. The best part? There are things you can do to increase your strength and flexibility, which can help increase the speed of your run and the height of your jump, no matter what the length of your legs is. Improving your speed or vertical jump involves a dedication to proper training and recovery. In other words, practicing proper form, building strong muscles, and stretching those muscles are important for gaining speed while you run or height on your jump. Training also involves properly feeding and hydrating your body, allowing time for rest and recovery, and getting enough high-quality sleep. Again, none of these have anything to do with your height or the length of your legs. It's all about having a stable core, a good form for balance and strong force as you move. In fact, a lot of your ability to jump high or run fast has to do with strength and output of vertical force. So first, let's take a look at the forces at play as we're moving during activities like running or jumping. As you run or jump, there are several natural forces working against you from those created by everything from friction to wind. However, the biggest force against you is the force of gravity. I mean, without gravity, we'd all be floating around as if we we're in space. So, gravity is necessary, but it doesn't work against us as we do things like run and jump. Because of the force of gravity, runners and jumpers have to create a strong vertical force several times bigger than their body weight to propel forward or upward against the downward force of gravity. So let's start by talking about running. While it might be easy to assume people with longer legs run faster than those with shorter legs, it's not a universal statement. Just because someone has long legs does not mean they can run fast or faster than someone with shorter legs. However, if you have shorter legs, it might feel like it's hard to keep up with other runners who have longer legs. Longer legs might naturally produce a bigger stride, but that doesn't mean being good or fast at running. 
Let's dive more into some physics and the idea of force to understand a bit more about what does matter. As you run, every time your foot hits the ground, you must produce a large vertical force into the ground to propel you off the ground and forward. The bigger the force, the faster the movement. I mean, the most significant factor influencing a runner's ability to move quickly is the force at which they literally hit the ground running with each step or stride. In other words, the greater this force generated as you push off the ground is, the more powerful your stride will be and the faster you will run. The more powerful the step, the faster the runner can go. This force is largely created by muscles in your hips, glutes, and legs. It's also due to the flexible movement of the joints in your hip, knee, and ankles. That means that while your legs don't necessarily have to be long, they do have to be strong and flexible. This means it's important to take part in proper and consistent strength training exercises to increase your muscle strength and ability. Since running is also dependent on the joint movement of your hips, knees, and ankles to increase your stride, you need to be sure to properly stretch and rest before, after, and in between training sessions. And it's not much different when it comes to jumping either. Just like you push into the ground as you run forward, you have to push into the ground when you jump upward too. You do that by generating, you guessed it, force. The more powerful the force you produce, the higher you will jump. As you increase your strength and speed of your jump, you will be able to produce more power or force. So you want to be sure to strengthen the muscles involved in jumping or those in your legs, glutes, and core. The result, a higher vertical jump. While you want to ensure you have strong muscles to help you create a strong force, you also need to make sure you have good flexibility to allow you the range of motion needed to proper form as you jump. As with running, stretching before, after, and in between training sessions and performances is really important. Now, whether you are looking to run faster or jump higher, it's important to remember this. Slow and steady wins this race. You need to dedicate time and persistence to improving your vertical force. Trying to work too hard and push yourself too quickly can lead to injury that will slow you down or lower your jump in the long run. So work hard, but also pay attention to how your body feels. Be sure to rest when you need to and always take time to warm up and cool down for better, more sustainable results. Long story short, being a good athlete isn't necessarily about having long legs, but about the dedication to proper training and recovery techniques to help you generate more power and force. Well, that's all we have time for today. Besides, I've also got to get back to my training. As always, thanks for tuning in. And remember, don't let the look of your body trick you into thinking you're not capable of becoming a better athlete. If you're willing to put in the work and proper training techniques, I bet you'll be impressed by the results. Here's to running faster and jumping higher, my friend. See you next time. I'm out. <laughs>We are thrilled that you're watching Blue Studios 24-7. We're so excited to bring round-the-clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. Visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.